Hey everyone, Mrs. KJ here. I want to go over how to make your measurements with your barometer. So first of all, you wanna put your barometer outside for about 10 minutes before you take your measurements. Because especially this time of year, the temperature outside is much different than inside and that's going to affect your readings. Make sure you keep it out of the rain or snow. If you have an unheated building and you wanna just keep it in there, that would be great too, like in a garage. Careful though when I say unheated, you can't use an, a building like a chicken coop or a barn because that's going to have the heat from the animals in there too. So make sure you have a completely unheated building if you're gonna leave it outside. You don't just wanna leave it outside because of the frost and any other precipitation you might wanna get. So again, you can just set it outside about 10 minutes before it's time for you to take your measurements. When you take your measurements, you are going to make sure that the zero is on the ground where you are measuring from. And we are going to measure not in inches, because it's science class, we're gonna measure in centimeters or millimeters. So put the end of the ruler that says zero on the ground, and then you're gonna record where the end of your toothpick is, or if you cut your straw at an angle like mine is, where the end of your straw is. Now, obviously my picture is wrong because I'm inside, but that was easier for me to take a photo to show you guys. When you have your measurements, you are going to look at your table that you need to fill out. Day number one, we're starting this on February 1st. I'm writing down the time that I am taking my measurement. I'm writing down the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit because that's what we're used to measuring in here in the United States. If you don't have a thermometer, you can just look up, you can Google the temperature in your area, or if you have an app on your phone, that would work too. Then you're gonna convert it to degrees Celsius. The easiest way to do that is just to Google it and have Google magically convert it for you. Um, or if you are a math person and you want to mathematically calculate it yourself every time, you are welcome to do that. You're also going to look at the sky. So right now it is sunny and I see some wispy clouds. So not the big fluffy clouds, definitely no thunder clouds, but just those clouds that kind of look like feathers. That's what I'm seeing. Now I want to measure the height of my toothpick. Or if you cut your straw at an angle like I did, I'm gonna measure the point of the straw. So we wanna measure it in millimeters. Now you might be thinking to yourself, isn't this centimeters? Yes, it is. It's actually centimeters and meters. So we're gonna start by taking our measurement in centimeters. So I have 12, 13, 14. Okay, I know it's between 13 and 14. Oh, there's my halfway line because it's a little bit longer, so 13.5. 13.6, 13.7, it's closer to the 13.7. So on my table, I'm gonna go ahead and write 13.7 centimeters. Now to change it to millimeters, all I do is multiply by 10 or move the decimal one place to the right. So it's gonna be 137 millimeters. So that's what I'm gonna write down for my measurement. Now. In class, you do have to log into the class and there's gonna be a quiz. And that quiz just basically says, did you do your measurements for today? Yes, that's just your daily reminder. You're gonna continue filling this out every single day for the next total of nine days. And again, making sure you take that quiz in the course as a reminder. Please, if you have questions, do not hesitate to ask your teacher.